Hello everyone, FonderXO3 here, and I want you to think of a browser game that you played back in the early 2010s that you were the most nostalgic for. Now, I'm guessing that most of you thought of Club Penguin or Pop Tropica, and if you did, then that means I'm irrelevant, because I played SpongeBob's Next Big Adventures instead. I'm ready! SpongeBob was a big part of my childhood. I've seen all of the episodes leading up to season 8, I've brushed my teeth with Spongebob branded toothpaste, and I have two, count them, two Spongebob washcloths. I've already reviewed the Spongebob plug and play that I grew up with, and although I don't think that video is aged very well, it still garnered a thousand views, so good job guys. Alright, clearly everyone here is a Spongebob fan, and if you're anything like me, then you two are impatiently waiting for the next best game of all time, Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated to come out, and you desperately need something Spongebob related to keep yourself occupied until then. Just a hunch, though. Spongebob's next big adventures was released on... Well, I don't know, the wiki didn't tell me. It did tell me that the Flying Dutchman's chip, which you can see in the top right hand corner of the title screen, is never actually used in the game. That was a tough pill to swallow. It also told me that this game is an updated version of Spongebob's Big Adventures, which I'm pretty sure was the version I played when I was little. I'm not too sure though, I think a bit of the title screen might have burned into the monitor. There aren't any major differences between the two versions, uh, at their core they're the same game. Uh, Next Big Adventures just throws in two new locations, which we'll get into in a little bit. Alright, I'm tossed in, and the game forces me to feed Gary, so I do so, and off we go! Uh, Squidward gives me a map and tells me to get the heck out of here, so I promptly get the heck out of there. And here we are at the Krusty Krab. Uh, Sandy invites me to her tree dome, and I'm forced to go there because this game doesn't allow me to do more than one quest at a time. Excuse me, my nostalgia goggles are slipping. In order to get there, I have to fetch my bowl, which Patrick has been keeping warm for me, thank you buddy. And in order to get the bowl off the fat little bugger, I have to fetch some jelly from Jellyfish Fields. Then I can head over to Sandy's tree dome. Uh, she tells me to climb up her tree to fetch her her letter. Fetch. That word sounds important. Anyway, I fetch her letter by playing a brief minigame, and it turns out there are two tickets to Glove Universe inside them. One of the new additions included in Next Big Adventures. Anyway, I head back to the Krusty Krab where I find Mr. Krabs who just refuses to make eye contact with me. It's very rude. He tells me that his gas pipes went missing or something, and I say okay, I'll put them back for you. Then he just stands there with a jar, and when I ask him about it, he says I have to pay him $10 for it. So in order to make money, I have to play this Krabby Patty making minigame, which I used to love as a kid. Now it's just okay. It's fun to challenge yourself by multitasking as you make the sandwiches, and there is a time limit, but it's not that strict. So I scrape together 10 bucks, I get the jar, and with nothing else to do there, I leave. Patrick's back and he wants to go jellyfishing, but he needs me to fetch his stuff first. Oh, this game is a fetch quest! Well, now I have to hate it! I find Patrick's shirt outside the chum bucket, and can we just take a moment to appreciate how sad the music is in this area? Thanks. Squidward has Patrick's glasses, and for some reason he won't give them to me unless I do him a favor. That's theft! He makes me work his job at the Krusty Krab. It's an adding mini game, that's all it is. Sometimes lag causes the keys to get stuck, but that was the only problem I ever ran into. And it pays better than being a fry cook, who'd have thought? Okay, I get the glasses, I find the net in my house, and I already have the jar, so that's what that was for. Now we can go jellyfishing. Well, I guess I just suck at jellyfishing. Look at this, the game already knows how bad I am, it won't let me play the game. Whatever, I decided to go back to the chum bucket instead where I have to beat Karen three times at Pawn. Man, back when I was younger, I never associated this game with Pawn, I always thought they ripped off Wii Play. After we beat Karen, she said she'll tell us her secret. Ooh! It's just access to the town. Eh. I head over there and find Plankton, who wants to steal my snail food. You sick son of a Plankton. This boss fight is too easy. I'm 99% sure you can't even get hit. Where's the challenge? So I beat him, and he hires me at the chum bucket. Yay? It's just the Krabby Patty making minigame, but sadder, and the patties are green now. Ew. It's at this point that I decide to go to the frozen tundra, where I'm told my friends have been kidnapped. <gasps> and they're free. Phew. You know, I remember the Frozen Tundra being a lot more engaging when I was little. Uh, hang on, let me check the wiki. Twelve seconds later. Oh, so apparently Nickelodeon at some point updated the game to help streamline it more or something. 
and in the process, they made the frozen tundra ten times lamer. Before, you had this huge platforming level where you had to collect gummy worms or something to fight the snow monster, but now we just get this auto-scrolling level where you have to jump occasionally when a snowball appears. Riveting! But don't worry, they kept the boss fight in. What the heck, he dies in three hits. He never has a chance to kill you. I really need to update the prescription on these nostalgia goggles. Why did they change this? They had a perfectly good platforming level that they changed to something on par with a mobile game. Oh, they ported the game to mobile. <laughs> and that's why the Jellyfishy minigame didn't work. <laughs> let, let, let's just finish this. After that disappointment, I finally head over to Glove Universe. There's two minigames there I can play. One is a balloon poppy minigame, which is nothing special. The other is the seahorse racing game. You make your seahorse go faster by spamming the spacebar. Wait, that's it? That was the easiest thing I've ever done in this game. Well, what do I get for winning? Ten dollars? I'm gonna be rich! Here comes the money! Here we go! Money talks! Here comes the money! I'm rich now. Uh, where were we? Oh yeah, uh, Sandy gets kidnapped and Glover over here won't let me go in and save her unless I play some mini games, which is no problem. I bust in, uh, do a repeat of the Plankton boss fight, and Sandy's free. And that's it. It's not a very long game. I beat it in under an hour. However, I do remember it being a lot harder when I was little. Now, that could just be because I was a little kid who sucked at video games, which I was, but... I also feel that the jump to mobile kind of dulled down the difficulty. I remember the old Frozen Tundra being crazy difficult when I was younger. Now it's just this. The boss fights are pathetically easy. I even feel like some of the mini games had stricter time limits. And from watching gameplay videos of the old game, you could interact with more stuff too. Everything has been dulled down to the point where I don't even think a little kid like I was could enjoy this game. Of course, with the jump to mobile, they had to simplify things to make it easier to play on a mobile device, but why did they have to change the PC version? I am very nostalgic for this game, I've made that very clear throughout this video, and because of that, it's been really hard for me to critique this game. Uh, maybe if I take off these nostalgia goggles... <gasps> this game is a relic from the not-so-long-ago past that does not need to be remembered. It's not bad, it's not good either, it just kind of exists. With the game's difficulty being as low as it is, this game is nothing more than a mindless fetch quest. A short fetch quest, but still a boring one. For a free browser game from the early 2010s, it gets a pass, but oh man, I'm really starting to feel the negativity now, I need to, I need to put these back on. <sighs> Much better. I went back to this game hoping to rediscover what I loved about it way back when, but instead I was met with disappointment. Well, farewell Spongebob's next big adventures. Uh, you were fun back in the early 2010s, but you will not satisfy my thirst for Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. I don't think any game will. Oh yeah.